I'm sure you like me by now have a build in Remnant 2 that you oftentimes default to your old faithful, your staple build that gets you through difficult encounters. In this video, I want to share with you my old faithful build, the build that I use to push difficult boss fights, and mostly the build that I use in Apocalypse to farm for materials if I need them. Now, generally speaking, I like mod based builds in Remnant 2, they're just more fun for me to play. However, the one we're looking at today is actually a firepower slash gun based build, and that's because in Remnant 2, these builds are a little bit more efficient at dealing damage a little bit more powerful than the ones or let's rather say the mod based counterparts that we see in this now this is unlike what we saw in remnant one remnant one definitely mod power was uh, the way to go if you really wanted to see some crazy shit but mark my word we will be loading as many skills rings amulets mods and things as we can onto this to make this a refined damage dealing monster that operates very well in apocalypse and keeps you alive while it does it let's go alrighty so starting us off with the archetypes we're using challenger as our prime archetype and using gunslinger as our secondary archetype the way you should think about this is one of your archetypes should be your defensive option and one of yours should be your dps option if you choose two dps's that can sometimes work but it can sometimes also make you super super glass cannony which is not that great against certain bosses in apocalypse so definitely you want to go one defensive and one offensive two defensive you could also do that but that can sometimes mean that you just take way too long to deal any damage which can also sometimes be a bad thing now challenge is a really good option for a defensive based archetype just due to the fact that we have access to die hard as our prime perk as long as we choose this as our prime archetype die hard is essentially a resurrection for yourself that gives you all of your hp back and three seconds of invulnerability and you'll see as we go through some of the things in this build that a lot of this build revolves around essentially going all in on a damage phase so when you push a boss to a certain position or once you activate all of your skills all of your buffs and everything like that you give yourself a 15 to 25 second window that you essentially just download as much damage as you possibly can into the boss and oftentimes it's two or three of these windows that is all that's required for you to basically kill the boss now die hard is a good way for you to survive one of these damage windows in the case of the boss you know pushing you and essentially killing you you get all your hp back you get a little bit of vulnerability to clear the area get away from the boss and then start all over again and we also have a close quarters in here which gives us increased damage the closer enemies are to you now most bosses in this game charge you down yeah there's a fair share of bosses that kind of like hover and fly around and are a little bit further away but generally speaking all enemies in this game will try to make their way to your face as fast as possible so this will just make you deal more damage to those enemies as they get closer to you and you also get a little bit of additional critical chance here some of the other ones the other perks that we get here with the challenger are not that fantastic due to the fact that some of it gets negated by you know the items the rings and the amulets that we take but generally speaking uh, intimidating presence is also good here because it just gives us a little bit more survivability against enemies especially in situations where you have a crowd that's basically pushing you now our archetype uh, trait here strong back gives us uh, less encumbrance by 10 but you'll see how this doesn't really matter due to the rings and the amulet that we take so this is kind of like dead this is the only downside for me to picking the challenger i wish i could have gotten these 10 points you know and and given it to something else now, in terms of the skill what we're using is rampage a rampage what it does is as soon as you activate it it increases your fire rate by 15 percent it gives you faster reload speed and it gives you faster movement speed as well this all lasts for 10 seconds now while you deal damage or it says while you deal significant damage or get kills you get stacks of rage and once you hit 10 stacks of rage you go into berserk which reloads your firearm that you're currently using and doubles these rampage effects that we had before so now instead of a fire rate of 15 percent you have 30 reload speed of 40 percent and movement speed of 20. So you absolutely want to be trying to get into a rage state by the way rage obviously also increases your damage by 2.5 percent per stack which means once you get up to you know uh 10 stacks you're also doing 25 percent additional damage which is kind of fucking sick but either which way you want to be hitting rage as much as off uh, you know possible as often as possible so in the situation where you are fighting bosses that have ads uh, it's absolutely a good idea to actually mop those ads because each one of those ads are worth one stack of rage so don't just focus on trying to deal significant damage to the boss actually kill those ads and that's also going to trip up your rage much faster now moving us over to our secondary archetype gunslinger is our dps option 
And that's because we want access to bullet storm so before we talk about anything else about gunslinger the main reason why we pick gunslinger is because we want bullet storm bullet storm gives us increased fire rate of 20 percent and a reload speed of 50 this complements what we're already getting on the side of the challenger so we just have a huge amount of fire rate increase which more bullets faster means more damage and we also have a reload speed increase as well in the case of if you're using a weapon that has a slightly longer reload you're not using the weapons that i'm going to tell you to use then this is also going to benefit you with just being able to reload those faster now gunslinger itself its actual perks are not that bad at all we of course have swift shot which gives us even more fire rate 15 percent 25 percent range damage and five percent crit chance for all firearms so all of this is going to benefit the damage that we are essentially getting from uh you know both the the challenger and the gunslinger and essentially using a weapon to deal damage with that now uh, we have some other ones here as well like you have quick hands which give us even more you know reload speed especially if your magazine is empty so just in general we have a huge amount of you know things that essentially add to the functionality of us being able to shoot faster and uh, just be you know combat ready all the time we also have ammo reserves in our trade here which gives us ammo reserves up by 50 this is sometimes a lifesaver especially some of the long guns in the game have very very poor bullet reserves so oftentimes in a long fight you can actually run out of bullets if you haven't been diligently picking up red boxes and this shit can sometimes be a lifesaver then getting us to the items and actually let me just move my face here quickly in the armor we are using leto mark ii in the helm the breastplate the legs and then we're using the labyrinth gauntlets on the gloves the reason why we're using the labyrinth gauntlets is because they have slightly higher armor than the leto mark ii and since the leto mark ii armor is the armor in the game with the highest amount of armor um it's kind of weird to me that the labyrinth gauntlets are better yes they have slightly different you know resistances but that's okay i mean you can choose what you want to use here if you want to use the labyrinth too you can simply just you know use that and you can see in this case you have slightly less armor but you have 10 10 10 10 10 10 on all of the resistances uh unless you want the labyrinth gauntlets where you see you have slightly i mean we're talking about a percent here so this is really some min max shit here right now and then of course your resistances change a little bit as well now what we are looking at when we see the stats here is we're looking at a, a total damage reduction of 66 percent which is fairly damn good and uh, that is going to actually help us you know be super survivable in the case of us pushing you know difficult content like apocalypse now of course the leto mark to armor uh, pushes you into heavy encumbrance so you have a flop chance when you try to evade and we're gonna have to find a way to mitigate that to deal with that which we will deal with once we get to the amulets and the rings so you gotta hold on tight for that now, in the case of our relic we're using the tranquil heart uh, this is a relic i think it in my opinion might be one of the best ones in the game it's certainly one that i love using i like the idea of having passive health regeneration which means that yes when i do fuck up i take damage but then if i'm good and dodge once or twice or three times then you know i essentially get my life back because i have this cool health regen happening in the background which of course the tranquil heart provides now the shards that i'm using in here is the mythic range critical which gives me you know the range critical chance i'm using uh, critical damage increase and i'm using range damage increase because these are primarily the three different ways in which we're dealing damage we're not dealing damage with mods uh, even though of course we have mods on our stuff uh, they're not the star of this build and we're also not dealing damage with skills or anything like that so range damage is where it's at we want to crit we want to deal more damage when we crit and we want to deal a little more you know more damage like that in the case of the weapon here my go-to is the nightfall and that's because the nightfall plays into if you remember in the intro when we were talking about these damage phases that you essentially with this build enter into when you activate all of your skills and you for the next 15 to 25 seconds just concentrate on shooting as much as possible nightfall is the weapon that enables a lot of that due to the fact that dreadwalker it's mod gives you increased fire rate but more importantly gives you 10 percent lifesteal and makes your weapon fully automatic now this means that nightfall itself by usual is a gun that you have to click every bullet to shoot but this makes it fully automatic and this 10 percent lifesteal coupled with all of the other damage bonuses that we're getting from our skills and everything that we activate is going to just make you deal more damage than can be dealt to you so you can literally stand in the fire and you'll be able to essentially deal with all of the damage that's coming towards you because you're pushing that much out 
and this is this damage window concept that i'm essentially talking about now in the case of our mod here we're using momentum uh this is when the weapon scores a critical hit it increases critical chance and critical damage by three percent for three seconds this can stack 10 times which means it goes all the way up to 30 percent and critical hits with this weapon give you two stacks at a time if you have this at level 10 so it's just going to stack up that much faster now it might be the case that you either don't have the nightfall or you don't like using it another weapon that i can highly recommend is the blackmore ar-47 this weapon allows you to put your own uh you know mod in there sorry just now i was obviously talking about mutator jesus i get these wrong all the time but mutator when, when i was talking about momentum but i think you guys know what i'm what i'm saying um here you can use your own mod in here corrosive rounds is phenomenal because once again it just gives you more range critical chance when you infect you know enemies with this acid corroded effect and uh, likewise you would again use the same thing you would use momentum so absolutely blackmore works well here as well if you're if you're a pulse rifle kind of guy that can work as well so you don't have to use the nightfall however this whole damage window concept and this massive 10 percent life steal that you get from dreadwalker really really adds the flavor to this build so while it is possible that you can use something like the blackmore and in the background you can see me doing that uh you're really gonna love what this build does when you use something like the nightfall right in the case of your melee weapon pfft, it doesn't matter yeah i these days i always run around with the krell axe on me um you can use a weapon with transference on it which gives you an opportunity to get a little bit of ammo back into your weapons if you are struggling with that sort of thing i generally you know throw the enemy with the krell axe when i fucking remember to do it but mostly i just shoot and basically shoot some more and then you know when the thing's dead then i remember oh shit i was supposed to use my melee weapon so you know it is what it is in our secondary i'm using the mp60r you know the submachine gun the uzi whatever you want to call it and this by the way is entirely your choice what you want to use here of course the majority of your damage is going to be coming from your primary but sometimes you need something that can help you deal with an aoe situation you want to you know you have a bunch of smaller enemies that are charging you down maybe this gun is empty and you just need to inch out a little bit of additional damage i think this is the flavor choice here right now now i personally like firestorm a lot i like setting shit on fire so you know it's pretty cool i also like the fact that firestorm has this fucking suck zone where when you shoot it at an enemy um it affects the ability of the enemy to close distance to you so a lot of the times uh, some of these big bruiser type enemies in the game will walk you down and you can shoot them with a firestorm and the firestorm will lock them in place as they try to get out of this fucking suck zone and in that time you can shoot them some more and most likely kill them this shit works on some bosses as well so it's in my opinion actually pretty fucking sweet but of course there are other options here as well you can absolutely use the enigma enigma is a fantastic weapon they've fucking nerfed it but it's still really really good and it's really really good at doing aoe damage i also personally am a huge fan of the nebula because nano swarm is pretty damn sweet as well and of course you can you know put whichever mutators in there like harmonizer anything like that get a little bit of additional damage out of those uh, mods that you're using moving us over to the rings and amulets i think we need to start by actually talking about the rings first and then the amulet choice will make a little bit more sense to you now ring of omens is here for us for two reasons first of all we need a way to deal with this weight encumbrance issue that we have from wearing the leto mark ii and the fact that when we evade it flops now a let's say hidden mechanic of the ring of omens here because what ring of omens does is it says that evades cost a percentage of your max life a little bit more than 14 percent as gray health instead of stamina so instead of paying with stamina to dodge we're actually going to pay with hp now this ring of omens its hidden mechanic is it actually then also allows you to do a normal dodge so you bypass the fact that you are over encumbered by this you know armor that you're wearing now another hidden aspect for this ring of omens and that's why this ring is so fucking dope is that a bunch of other amulets that all come from yesha allow you to then essentially do something called a mist step and that is the dodge that you've been seeing me doing in the background the entire time in the footage and uh, so we are combining this with death's embrace now there's a bunch of these amulets that work with this full moon circle a uh, circlet works with this necklace of flowing life works with this uh talisman of the sun radio sigil and ravager's mark but in our case we're using death's embrace because it suits what we're trying to do with this build death's embrace says that we gain 20 percent damage uh when our health is below 100 and we gain haste when we are below 58 percent hp so 
because we are paying hp we have a way to directly trigger our damage state here generally speaking of course you could be hit by a boss or shot or something like that which takes you below 100 percent hp and so therefore you get this 20 percent additional damage from death embrace but the cool thing about ring of omens is that we also give ourselves the ability to inflict damage on ourselves and therefore trigger this damage effect which is pretty damn sweet now we couple this with probability cord because we are already you know really really focused on critical damage and critical damage sorry critical hit chance and critical hit damage so this just does more of that probability cord is most likely one of the best dps you know rings in the game just due to how powerful 30 percent additional crit damage is then we are using ring of the damned here and this is a free slot in a way uh, i'll explain why i say that just now but this says that it increases all damage dealt by 10 percent while gray health is present again whenever we use ring of omens to do a misty step and dodge we are actually paying gray health and so therefore we give ourselves the additional damage from death embrace but now we also get another 10 percent from ring of the damned which just pushes our damage a little bit more now if you are struggling with survivability with this particular build, this is a free slot for you and you can swap it out for something else for a very very long time until i got super super comfortable with this i used where the fuck is it i used hardened coil as my defensive option here this says that reduces all incoming damage by three percent for each ten percent of missing hp so as you are dodging 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 you are essentially incurring more and more hp damage and therefore you're getting more and more and more damage reduction up to 15 percent and this is to all damage so this is a good way for you to offset the fact that now you've taken so much damage by do dodging and actually give yourself a little bit more survivability but i will say this again once you get better at playing this build and due to how flexible misty step can be and enemies having a hard time getting hold of you while you do that you can start looking at more dps options and ring of the damned is a pretty good one at that now, last but not least we are dodging a lot with this build for two reasons one dodging is good you gotta avoid that fucking damage and two it looks pretty damn sweet with misty steps so why wouldn't you want to do it and akari warband gives you a uh, critical chance and critical damage 15 percent on both sides uh, for 15 seconds if you perfect dodge and you're gonna be perfect dodging a lot it's not like in other games where it's really really difficult to do it in remnant 2 you perfect dodge by fucking accident most of the times by just avoiding enemy damage and this is gonna have almost 100% uptime, especially in boss fights where the boss is crowding you the whole time and taking big melee swings and shit at you. So uh, this is just a fantastic way to just increase your damage even more. Last but certainly not least is the traits. And this one is a lot more straightforward. We don't have to spend all that much time here. I promise I'm gonna let you go real soon. Of course, we get ammo reserves from our trait, well, sorry, from our archetype choice, and we get strong back from our archetype choice. So our first 10 points are going into fortify to increase our armor effectiveness by even more that's how we get the super high damage reduction value that we have in the build by default without augmenting it with rings or amulets or anything like that then we take regrowth which gives us a little bit of passive health regen this works alongside the lifesteal that we have and just in general uh, is one of the reasons why this build is kind of like so good at bouncing back remember that you are also inflicting a lot of damage on yourself by dodging you're taking 15 percent of your hp damage every time when you dodge so you need a way to refill that and regrowth really helps you out here we do take swiftness giving us that 15 percent additional movement speed which is pretty damn awesome obviously take vigor because we want the 30 more hp uh these two points in uh, endurance are there by default we do take bark skin giving us another 10 percent of damage reduction which is again why we get to the number that we have when we look at our stats there and then for me in a way uh i would say this is not like a like an auto include but you could test this yourself and you can see what misty step looks like without this and what it looks like with it uh, what fitness does is it increases your evade distance by 30% and it takes misty step which is already really good and just makes it fucking awesome by giving you an extra 30% of move distance when you actually engage it so pretty damn sweet and that's going to leave you with eight points left over and i like to put this into siphoner which gives me 2.4 percent base damage as lifesteal um this will in the case of you not using uh thingy over here not using nightfall and using something else like the dmr or whatever or pulse rifle still give you a little bit of built-in lifesteal which is kind of like essential for builds in apocalypse where in many cases in boss fights you do take a little bit of damage all the time that's kind of like unavoidable so you need a way to top that up
and that's it for the build thank you so much for watching a little bit of a longer one today i do like to talk about these things but uh if you stayed with me all the while i appreciate you let me know in the comments down below how you would change this uh, if you've tried something similar to this what you'd like me to try and augment and move around everything like that i am open to all suggestions i love this game i have so many more build ideas and build videos and stuff that are coming out i took a little bit of a break but we're back in full force now and you'll see a couple of more of these showing up real soon lastly i also want to thank everybody for the support on this channel it's been phenomenal i appreciate the views the comments and just in general you guys being pretty damn awesome uh and other than that it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world till next video fucking cheers